So that was Christopher Goss with I Want to Stay Home. What an amazing performance. And he is with me right now. Hello. How are you doing? 
All right, Pablo. Very well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, as you can tell, well, I, I don't know. You can't tell because this is the first time we've seen each other, but I'm looking more and more disheveled and sweaty as uh, Jellyfest is going on because <laughs> it was going well, to be... have been working really hard, so uh, you're uh, doing all right. No, nah, it's okay. It, it's becoming the live aid of, uh, you know, jellyfish gigs now. It's going to go on for about four days and, uh, you know, <laughs> pitch your tent and, <laughs> um, you know, but take time off work and you'll be fine. Um, so what led you to uh, want to perform I Want to Stay Home? Was it the Rod Stewart cover? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, as a matter of fact... <laughs> I didn't even know about that cover until I started looking at uh, versions online. Um, and I am quickly trying to forget that as much of a Rod fan as I may be. How does it make you feel to know that you definitely did a better version than Rod Stewart? <laughs> oh, you know, it was like it was the, he didn't even, hadn't heard the song until the background track was playing, you know? <laughs> well, he kind of sings the upper third harmony as well. He doesn't yeah, sing he, the lead he's, line. He's he really finds weird. the melody on occasion, but, you know. <laughs> And I think you know know when you go somewhere and there's the paved path, and then there's clearly where people just walked in between and the grass (laughs) is worn out. He he cut his own path on that song. Yeah, I know that he uh, he did not want to release it, and I know Andy and Roger were slightly annoyed that it didn't get released. And I think it ended up on some kind of Rod Stewart rarities uh, box set, which is a shame. But. yeah, so what what led you to I Want to Stay Home, though? Because within the Jellyfish catalogue, it it kind of stands out as, to me, a not very jellyfishy song, but at the same time, it definitely is a jellyfish song. It kind of comes from a very different area than some of the other songs on Belly Button. For sure. I mean, that's, that's more of a, uh, I don't want to say a stock song, but, um, right, it doesn't have a lot of the flair or polish or, or you know, the hallmarks of their bigger sounds. Um, and it really, well, when when you had first put the message out, initially I think I was thinking that it was gonna be specific to belly button and I, re- or, and I really didn't know how big the scope of this whole project was gonna get. Yeah. And <laughs> you no, know, I, I wanted to at least take a swing and, and I'm a hobbyist now at best, you know, 25 years ago I played in bands and stuff. And I like to do demos at home and we moved end of last year. I haven't been able to really uh, set all my stuff back up. So I'm thinking, okay, well, what can I do that'll more or less be an acoustic demo? And then, you know, I thought also timeline wise, I'm like, you know, I don't even really have time to, to, to try to do a demo. I'm just going to do it live to tape and see what happens. And, um, you know, it was jellyfish has always been tough for me because they're kind of beyond my capabilities in a lot of ways. And and that was one that um, suited the circumstance to be able to do it. And I thought I could maybe kind of do halfway decent. So it just wound up me in the front room trying to to play to the iPhone, you know. <laughs> No, it was great. And I mean, it, it just kind of shows you because there are a lot of stripped down performances of Jellyfish songs on Jellyfest. Uh, and as Jellyfish showed themselves when they did those acoustic sets during the Spilt Milk show yeah. it, uh, shows, it, it's kind of a testament to Andy and Roger's songwriting that they can have something that can be so overproduced and uh, just grand and, you know, with uh, counterpoint lead vocals like on Ghost of Number One, but Oh, yeah. When it comes down to it, one person can actually perform those songs with just a piano and just an acoustic guitar as well. So, I mean, it's, it definitely says a lot to their uh, ability as uh, songwriters, I would say. I would think so. And, you know, and I've seen interviews where uh, they speak to that, you know, that it really is just the guy with the guitar or the piano. And and is this a good song before we even embellish it? Hmm. Yeah, and, you know, it has to be something that I think they probably were aware that with singles, it has to be something that can fit in the top 40. Not everything can be Brighter Day or Ghost of Number One, which was a song that they, I mean, Andy says himself, he didn't even really want to have released as a single. He would have preferred joining a fan club as the first single. Um, And especially when they made that music video where, you know, it got banned in Europe and... (laughs) 
<laughs> everything else. Yeah. It was a, it, it was what you would call a shit show um, <laughs> in terms of the release of that single. Um, yeah, and it's the, funny yeah. that they're so recognized for their their kitschiness, but you know, there's uh, there's menace in there as well. There's a lot of menace in there, but the, I want to stay home. It's so. I, I don't think there's a song that I've ever heard that just has a very, I don't know if nostalgic is the right word, but it just so it captures the mood of being at home and sort of, you know, um, enjoying your surroundings and, uh, you know, enjoying being with your family and stuff like that. It really is such a, a warm, cozy song. Um, it's one of those great songs that really you're right you know the the lyric the lyric and the the tone and the feel is a is a great match you know i always thought too that one of the differences between the albums was the first one i think they were trying to um have a a, an homage to a degree to to acts that they loved you know that they could could not imitate but you know um use some of the same colors you know and then into spilled milk is when it kind of took more of its own personality, even though they were still using a lot of um, uh, influence, obviously. But you know that first one, I, um, you know, I think like a lot of people will try to um, pick up a torch of of somebody else. You know, like this is going to be you know really Todd Rundgren or this is going to be really you know, queen influence. Can we do what they did? Can we use that palette? You know? Mm -hmm. And, and, and the, the thing about belly button as an album, cause I, I know some people prefer belly button to spilt milk and the general consensus generally is that people kind of prefer spilt milk, but it's amazing because of the, um, the, the size of this page in particular, how many people have come forward and said, no, I actually prefer belly button. No, they think spilt milk may be a little too over the top for their tastes. And um, it's amazing that, you know, belly button really does stand up in its own right as an album. Um, oh yeah. I mean, that's just one of the best debuts ever. And yeah. I mean, for me personally, I guess I was about 14 when that came out and that just blew my mind. You know I mean? I was already really into, a lot of British invasion and stuff like that stuff older than, than I am, you know, I wasn't super into contemporary stuff, but, oh man, that just floored me. I was just starting to learn to play different instruments and, and try to understand songwriting and all this other stuff. And, uh, it opened so many doors and turned me on to so many, so many people and influences that that came at the perfect time in my life. Perfect age. But was it at the time that the album came out? Yeah, yeah, that came out in 90, I guess. So I got it for Christmas that year. Nice. Uh, I guess I was 14. Uh -huh. I got that and I got uh, Thrills, Pills, and Belly Aches in my stocking. <laughs> and uh, Cassette or CD? Or? CD. I, I had just gotten a player, I guess, a, a year or two before. You know, So I was stockpiling my, my Smiths and REM and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, 89 and 90. The the laws, stone roses, jellyfish. I mean, that was a a triple threat that that set the template for the rest of of my life as a music fan. Nice. And 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 the thing is, what you know, the thing I say about uh, a lot of people preferring spilt milk. It's certainly the case with uh, people who are introduced to jellyfish. I think they gravitate towards spilt milk um, before belly button because I guess maybe Spilt Milk has more cohesion as a concept album than Belly yeah. Button does, which is, you know, it it feels more like a collection of songs, like it's sort of, you know, you almost like flicking through the stations because there's so many different styles on that. But I think, you know, a lot of uh, people who have introduced to Jellyfish are kind of sleeping on Belly Button a little bit. and um, For sure, yeah. yeah. Um, so did you did you get to see them? No, 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 no. Um, and I would have had opportunity to, and, <sighs> and for different reasons did not, um, you know, I, I had older cousins that were into really good music, so mm. they would try to get me places where my parents maybe didn't want me to go, but, uh, <laughs> no, no, unfortunately I did not. Uh, so did you, um, what would jellyfish, in heavy did you get to see them when they were in heavy rotation on mtv and get to see the tv appearances that they made 
Yes, I definitely did. We didn't, you know, I was trying to think of this too, like how I even knew about them, um, which I think must have been from MTV. We didn't have cable. My grandparents did, you know, and I would spend time at their house. So I must have seen it on MTV. I must have seen, you know, Babies Coming Back or something um, because I was very adamant about that CD for Christmas. But, um, and then I remember some MTV performances and stuff. So, Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but unfortunately, just did not get to see them live. I, I like but the idea for YouTube, man. I I watch almost daily. <laughs> yeah, and I think we we've all become uh, more grateful for the the bootleggers now, and I think even the band have as well, because it was probably frowned upon back in the day. Maybe not so much by the band. I think they knew that people, you know, because cameras back then weren't exactly, <laughs> you know for what sure. I mean. Yeah, um, yeah. So, and uh, as I've said during many interviews, uh, Kai Dansberg has been wonderful at being able to. Co- collect yes. everything and put it all together in one home as well. And he's a legend and he has a song on Jellyfest as well because uh, he's uber talented and it makes you sick how uh, how good he is, basically. And uh, and humble as well. So, you know, <laughs> like I'm just in, awesome. in awe of him constantly. Um, so with uh, I Want to Stay Home, um, did you have the single at the time? Because it, it was one of those singles that, also never had a music video but seemed to get released on like about 10 different formats it was like a really weird thing no i i did not have the single i mean i just had the album um which Mm -hmm. i listened to pretty constantly um yeah i mean at that time you know singles i mean obviously there were a lot of cd singles and and cassette singles and whatnot but i was not a singles collector per se at least not yet (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so it when uh, did you get the the fan club box set when it came out then because as as yes. someone who didn't buy the singles there would have been a lot of tracks that you maybe had never heard before with all the yes, yeah between everything. that and then the the reissues um i mean those were just a godsend yeah um so what did uh when did you start to like perform live and uh, to start writing music and everything was uh, was that a would jellyfish a huge part in your early side of being a musician as well? Yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so I had had a friend. We we had known each other since we were probably, um, I don't know, nine. And uh, right around 13 or so was when we decided we were going to start learning instruments. And, um, and then, yeah, we were 14, 15, um, started playing a little more seriously with other people. And he was much more talented than, than naturally talented than I'll ever be. And he was already um, able to do jellyfish songs and whatnot. And I was just trying to keep up. (laughs) Um, So uh, that was up to about high school. And then we did go to the same high school, but we were kind of doing other things. He got really into, to rush and things like that. And I was always a, an Anglophile. So I wanted to, to, probably wanted to be a ride or something like that. And uh, then afterwards, we got back together and we we did play and write and record together for a long time. And and by that point, you know, it was the, the things that were in common, obviously, the glue, Jellyfish being one, um, our, the first demo that we did was, uh, would have been like 94, maybe the beginning of 95. And uh, he had the song, very Jellyfish influenced, and so we're trying to figure out how to do embellishments like them too, throwing in these harpsichords and these weird, weird little bells <laughs> on counter melodies and stuff. And, uh-huh. and I, you know, pale in comparison, but it was present and, um, and was definitely part of the mix of what we were trying to, to, to sound like. That's wonderful. So I'm guessing that as, as is usually the case with everyone that I've chatted to, the love of jellyfish never went away. It never no. sort of went into the background or anything like that. Um, no, and even here in the States, you know, it's it's funny. Jellyfish fans are like other really rabid fans where when you find another one, it's just like you, you can't get enough of each other because finally somebody understands what you're you're talking about and why you're so obsessed. Oh, yeah, mate, I completely <laughs> I get it. Um, I, I said on one of the interview that I completely independently i was wearing i think that jellyfish shirt there and i was in a cafe and there was another person in that cafe completely independent i did not know this person and they also had a jellyfish t-shirt on and it was just like sort of <gasps> oh, 
the odds? Wow. What are the odds? So it was like that, and then we instantly became friends. <laughs> I would think so. Uh huh. Um, so, where can people um, find your music now, and uh, what projects do you have coming up? Uh, so I I do still do my own, which is nice. Um, I did get back together with that band after all those years. Uh, unfortunately, the the gentleman I was friends with he he passed away. That was kind of part of the impetus for the rest of us to get back together. Uh -huh. So um, that group was called Pop P O P, and we did get back together and do some new music. And we're gonna try to make that an annual thing. Uh, even though we've we're in different states and all that, um, and then I do uh, demoing on my own, um, which I call the Brighton Arms, which I would love to turn that into a, a real band someday, turn Pinocchio into a real band, mm -hmm. and and play again. I mean, like a lot of people, um, you know, music stepped aside for for family, and now that the kids are older and whatnot, and I'm still young enough, I can get uh, back to it a bit and. Uh, uh, so yeah, the Brighton Arms, I call that. That's all home demos that I'll usually play the instruments myself, uh, SoundCloud, some YouTube videos. And um, yeah, this year especially, uh, hope to get my equipment set back up and start making new demos. Now's the time to do it. Why, why, live. Yeah, now's the time to do it why, why, all, all at home. I've wasted the past year. I should have done a lot more than I did. But um, so where- I wish so too, yeah, but- <laughs> where, are you, where are you based? So I'm in, in New Jersey. In the United States, um, I think maybe 40 minutes south of New York City. Really, actually, right in between New York and Philly, which was was great. You know, um, even back in the day, and now there's just access to so much good music and so much good um, venues and things happening. That's great, and I would almost guarantee that there are people in the group from New Jersey who would probably love to make music as well. So, like, you know, if I if okay. I can, let's let's you know bring people together um and I, and I was out in Philly a couple of years ago and passed through New Jersey so next time I'm out there we have to we have to catch up and uh I would love that that would be great that would be great and uh, so being from New Jersey uh and because uh, as a huge huge Kevin Smith fan is it just a rite of passage that you have to be a fan of uh clerks or yeah I guess so <laughs> I mean actually it's funny I mean I I used to uh to go to the quick stop when he was there as a kid that wasn't far from the house i really Red Bank. So i knew him yeah, okay um you know and i i definitely like the movies and i've i've met plenty of people that have come and um you know checked out all the sites and stuff when he first had the comic shop um it was in a little tiny spot when they first opened it and uh, a girlfriend at the time they were in school in philly and they came up to visit so I don't know, 96 maybe. And he was a huge fan. And I said, oh, let's go to the comic shop. We'll check it out. And Kevin happened to be there. And he was so cool. I mean, he took his time, really talked to this kid and 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 gave him a great, uh, a great meeting. So I've had a lot of respect for him for that. He was very cool. Nice. You may have to show me some of the sites. I would totally. It'd be yeah. fun. That would be fun. So, uh, Christopher, um, I want to thank you for being a part of Jellyfest and for coming forward and uh, performing I Want to Stay Home. And I'm sure everyone will very much enjoy it. And I want to thank everyone for continuing to tune in to Jellyfest and stay tuned for what is coming up next.